Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. Recently at San Diego Comic Con 2023, I had the privilege of hosting the creator panel for Titan Comics, all new, beautiful, and horrific and important graphic novel, Mother Nature. And the creators of Mother Nature are writer Russell Goldman, award winning artist Carl Stevens, and Oscar winner, movie legend, and project creator Jamie Lee Curtis. They were all on great form and had a lot of interesting things to say. So here's the panel. Enjoy. Hey, everybody. How are you doing? I'm Andrew Sumner from Titan Comics, and uh, welcome to this panel celebrating the publication of this wonderful graphic novel, Mother Nature. Before we stay, before we start, let's see a trailer for Mother Nature. Please welcome on stage the creators of this supremely powerful and beautiful piece of work, award-winning artist Carl Stevens. <laughs> supremely talented author Russell Goldman. And project creator and author Jamie Lee Curtis. Hey guys, how are you? This really good. I didn't know wow. they'd made a trailer and everything. It's uh, I'm I just so y'all know, um, I saw this book in print two hours ago for the first time. <laughs> so I've I've seen it, you know, in a PDF form, and um, it is thrilling. And then to see that you've made a trailer, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's important. We're fucking the world. We need to do this better. God damn right. There is, there is a possibility of change, but we're gonna have to do it. And I'm really thrilled to see how enthusiastic you guys are for this beautiful piece of work that Carl has made for us. Jamie, there's a, there's a really interesting story behind how you put the creative team for this book together. Can you just tell everybody about it? Introduce these guys to the audience. Sure, of course. So when I was 19 years old, even though I could barely get out of high school with my 840 combined SAT scores, um, I knew that we were in trouble. I just knew from an environmental standpoint, uh, if I have any skill at all, it's that I am an emotional, I am, I, my antenna are incredibly attuned. And I knew it. And I had this idea for this, for a story, a movie, something in my head called Mother Nature, and I had some images, and of course I had some gruesome deaths because I have a very dark mind. <laughs> and when you see a few of them, you will understand. And I didn't do anything with it. And when I made the Halloween movie, which you guys supported so many of you in 2018, um, with David Gordon Green, I came back from that energized. I was. I had my mojo back for the possibility of how you could tell stories. And I came home and I said to my husband, I'm gonna hire somebody to write Mother Nature. And he said to me, as Christopher does, very quietly, 
um, why don't you? And I said, oh, please. I, I don't know how to write a screenplay. And he looked at me and he said, yes, you do. And honestly, I put on a wall, you guys know, I put a way that people were going to die <laughs> through <laughs> natural circumstances. I loved the Towering Inferno. I loved the Poseidon Adventure. So I had an, an, imagine of, uh, uh, an imagination of an idea of come up with every gruesome way that Mother Nature could kill people. I, you know, black ice, storms, hail, tornadoes, all of them burning them up uh, with extreme heat. And then a list of characters. And do you remember when you were in school and you would do those worksheets where they would say fruits and then colors? And it would be like apple is red, orange is, you know, and that's how I made the grid for the deaths in Mother Nature. And I wrote a 40 page treatment, but I didn't know how to write a screenplay. And I called a friend of mine and I said, does anybody uh, who had said her son um, was a film graduate, a film student graduate, uh, Russell Goldman, uh, Wesleyan University. And I said, he, he was looking for work in show business. And I said, oh, um, does he know how to work Final Draft? And he came over and inputted the 40-page treatment that I had written into a screenplay. And we started collaborating. And in our in collaboration- In a five-year relationship. Uh, five years ago. And in the collaboration, Russell took a big swing at the script and really formed it into the, what is now the story of Mother Nature. He focused it very much on women uh, in a way that I didn't. And now we had a screenplay. We weren't going to get it produced yet. And I collect New Yorker cartoons um, for my husband for our anniversary every year. I buy him an original New Yorker on our 35th wedding anniversary five years ago. Oh, that was five. No, 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 babe. Start clapping. It'll be 40 next year. Um, <laughs> but I bought a cartoon from the New Yorker, an original cartoon from the artist, and it was Bogart um, in Casablanca, beautiful, beautiful line drawing, um, sitting at the bar in Casablanca, and the uh, caption on the cartoon was, Alexa, play as time goes by. <laughs> and I contacted the artist to buy the original work. He said, what are you working on? I mentioned Mother Nature. He said, oh, let me read it. He read it. And then it was uh, Carl Stevens who said, I think it's a graphic novel. And then from that point, Titan uh, agreed. And now, four, three years later, we are sitting. <laughs> launching Mother Nature, the graphic novel. That's how it happened. Long version, but... Launching Mother Nature with our first ever Oscar-winning author, that is. So that's... It's been a year. <laughs> now, Carl, you've had a, a, an award-winning career, quite rightly, because you're all seeing some of this beautiful artwork of Carl's scrolling around behind us. Can, can you talk a bit about your journey to becoming the illustrator of this, of this graphic novel? Well, it's like Jamie said. Um, <clears throat> I, she just randomly sent me the script, and uh, I read it, and it was, um, you know, full of all these beautiful, like, descriptions and, like, you know, very vivid... Um, you know, ideas about what we were doing to the planet, you know, I mean, and also just, like, these really interesting uh, kills, you know, like she said, and it just, like, had, you know, these, this kind of, like, great balance between, um, you know, like, this, th this really important, you know, probably, like, the most important message um, about our, our climate and also mixed with, you know, like, uh, fun, you know, like gory stuff, and <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but um, you know, really, I was just looking for uh, a project that was kind of the opposite of what I'd been working on, because uh, like my last book uh, was a, was about my cat called Penny, a graphic, no uh, a graphic which memoir. is a wonderful piece of work, everybody. It's absolutely beautiful. 
so you know I, I thought this was would be like a nice you know big like interesting project to like really sink my teeth into but um, and you know also like I've, I've always been interested in you know fine art painting and you know especially like 19th century uh, American landscapes and I felt that you know I could bring like that knowledge and you know my you know um, you know, poor imitation of it, you know, into like a graphic novel form and also, you know, uh, like scratch that itch of doing like a genre of work, you know, because yeah. I've, I've like always wanted to work in genre and, you know, again, like this was kind of the perfect in for me. Uh, and such, such a beautiful outcome. Jamie, something we were talking about recently with some of the, uh, the, pub the publishing uh, distributors of the world was uh, the excitement of working with an artist like Carl when you see the pages come Ooh. in. Can you talk about that a bit? I'm, I, I can draw stick people. I mean, it's just awful. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm in awe of the ability to, to translate visual images through the different art forms, particularly pen, ink, watercolor. And you can see, I mean, look at the, that vist on the right-hand corner of what you're looking at. I mean, that is what the world should look like. That is what our natural world should be. And I just was so impressed with, with Carl's ability to tell the story visually. It's, it's also, by the way, I've been uh, realized in some forms. I've never been drawn into a comic book form and uh, there are a couple images of me that are so shockingly real that um, it's exciting. But what's most important to me is also the partnership and this is where Russell really steps in as my writer, co-writer, is it's a story written by three white people and it's a story about indigenous people and I just want to make sure that we talk about the steps and the amount of of deep research and collaboration that Russell brought to the project, because it's crucial in these times that we don't take credit for that, that this is, th these are a peoples and a culture that is very, that, you know, it, it, we took it from them. They were here. They loved the land. They loved it. They revered it. It was part of their culture to love it, and we have raped it and, and tortured it in the name of greed and avarice. And so I just very much want you to comment on that, if that's okay. Of course, yeah. This is the, the wonderful thing about working uh, for years on a book like this, on a project like this, is you get to develop meaningful relationships with, in the, in the case of Catch Creek, New Mexico, a, a fictitious town takes place near Farmington, near Sawmill, is, is a multicultural place. It's, it's there are uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, members of the Navajo Nation live there. And it, it mattered to not just bring in advisors to say like, here's what we have and, and, and fix it, but to bring them on very early in the process and more as we were developing the graphic novel and uh, share where we were coming from and the only reason that I think any of them worked with us and they asked us the same is like, well, what, why are you telling this story? Um, like, what, what, is, what is the perspective that you see here um, and, and what makes you three the people to do it? And, and we said that it's a story about, and I, I saw An Inconvenient Truth when I was 11 years old uh, and it obviously freaked me out as it did anybody of any age. It's a story about the decisions that one generation is making uh, in leaving a planet behind for the next. And that is a perspective that I think anyone can see and appreciate and, and try to understand. And the challenge of art about climate change is that there are people that deny it and it feels like talking to them is just talking to people that would rather live in a different reality but to tell a story like this involves a very emotional perspective that anyone can get behind. And that is where it focalized between two mothers and two daughters and a, a story that anyone could resonate with and a ride that anyone would, would want to go on. That's very well said, very well said. Thank you. We've talked around the book a bit now and introduced it. 
Could you give everybody a flavor of what the actual narrative is without too many spoilers? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, what you said. Oh. You're from England, we don't understand that. <laughs> this is true, this is true. Could you delve a bit Could into Could you the speak American, please? <laughs> Could we just delve into the story of the book a bit? Sure. Um, Mother Nature is set in Catch Creek, New Mexico, where a woman engineer named Nancy Denton um, has been paid by a corporate entity called Cobalt Energy, run by a woman named Cynthia Butterfield, um, to come up with a way to take fracking water and purify it and make it drinkable, ultimately greening, if you will, um, America, the world, from the way we've polluted it, which is bullshit. Um, but it's a, you know, it's a corporate greed move. And they are doing something called the Mother Nature Project on land that they have leased from a Native American woman named um, Ty, Kai Terrell, who has a daughter named Nova Terrell, who is a bit of an eco-terrorist. And when she finds out that her mother has leased the land for this bullshit water project, um, she, you know, wreaks havoc on the project and in the process is sort of struck by lightning and then basically anthropomorphizes into um, the spirit which is... The Naye, the enemy of the people, the, a, a Navajo it, creation. It's a myth. Navajo yeah. creation myth, enemy of the people, and then she, the anthropomorphized Nova, wreaks havoc on the town and peoples of Catch Creek um, as a way to set an example that um, we're doing things wrong and people die in some very interesting and gruesome ways. <laughs> Beautifully gruesome ways. And by the way, I don't know if any of y'all have heard of something called YouTube or Instagram or any of these things, but um, just Google or Instagram or whatever hailstorms recently, or anybody been looking at the floods in Vermont and in Philadelphia, I mean in Pennsylvania. I mean, it is happening. It's happening today. We are the, the hottest we've ever been in this country this week. I mean, talk about good timing. I mean, seriously, I mean, we couldn't be talking about something more important. And it's not like this is just some sort of vague graphic novel that you guys are like, oh, it's really cool. Just turn on the television. And I'm not proselytizing. I don't care what side you're on. It's happening. And there are things we can do to ameliorate it and to try to stem the tide. Excuse the pun. You know, I mean, it, shit is happening. And so it feels uh, absolutely on point right now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> Very well said. Yeah. Um, the uh, could you guys could you touch upon a bit more about the the relation the indigenous aspect of this book? Well, that's it's really Russ. Look at. It, it, we each have our strengths. As you can tell, I'm very loud. <laughs> and apparently very dark, which, um, but Russell really took the lead on making connections, making relations. Please talk about the relationships that you made with the advisors, including the afterward. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I mentioned it, it was years of uh, finding people and, and uh, sharing our work with them and collaborating with them, both in when this was just a script that Jamie and I were working on, and when this is a graphic novel, um, two Navajo men were especially incredibly valuable. I want to shout them out, Jeremiah Watchman um, and Brian Lee Young, who is a wonderful author uh, who has a new book out this summer. Uh, he wrote the afterword to our book, um, which we were very grateful uh, to see his words in. and. The the spirit itself, the spirit that we were using um, initially in this this to be completely transparent, uh, we thought initially 
a a Western uh, interpretation of nature in an anthropomorphized sense would be more sensitive. And we were encouraged by our advisors to say like, no, we, we love horror stories, we love gore, we love cool scenes with blood. Like, <laughs> you, you, can, you can do it well if you take the time to do it right. And that's something that Titan allowed us to do. We, uh, we ended up pushing back the release of this book a few times to make sure that, this, that the dialogue and the art itself um, was was vetted and it was uh, sensitive and it was it was real. This is a this is a real part of the world. The town itself is fictitious, but this takes place in it's nicknamed Four Corners, uh, New Mexico. It's where every major uh, form of energy has been harvested, um, and you see the remnants uh, of it. Um, you see, um, I just saw Oppenheimer last night. You 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 see the amount of um, uh, of nuclear, uh, the, the legacy of it um, lasting, and it's it's devastating, and the you you have to treat this with a sense of verisimilitude and specificity that this place deserves, um, and that is where the the enemy of the people themselves are. Uh, they're in the in the creation story. They are in the skeletons of um, discarded energy uh, that is that is beneath the ground. Um, in the Navajo Nation, so uh, that was a really exciting uh, chance to be given this story and to be trusted by our advisors to uh, treat it well. So, thank you. I mean, it was tremendously important to us mm -hmm. to support this very important message that you're delivering through the medium of entertainment. You know, but it's it's absolutely it's suffused on every page of the book what you're actually saying and what you're openly debating. I think it's a beautiful piece of work, and I think a big part of the uh, big part of the success of what you've done is uh, Carl's beautiful depictions oh. of the ideas and the stories. And as everybody can see from these this beautiful artwork, Carl has many strengths because he's he's really given full flight to these incredible vistas that you've created, stained by pollution, stained by climate turmoil. But also, I think. Your work with human character is fantastic. The faces of these characters, the faces of your character, Jamie. I know. So good. I mean, look, that's just crazy. That's just crazy. Give this guy a round of applause, right? Wow. It's amazing work. And by the way, I want to remind you guys, this is over two years of every single day, eight to 10 hours a day, Carl at a drafting table by himself, with pen and ink, and then overlay and color, and all of the creation of the comic book part is all Carl. It, we didn't, we had nothing to do with that. We wrote the original story in the original format, but how it is formatted into a graphic novel form is 100% Carl. And it's, again, we never saw it until Today, the, today was the first time we held this book in our hands, and it's thrilling. It, it, it's, it's a beautiful artifact. And Thanks. Carl, can Thanks. we talk a bit about your process? By the way, have you seen how Im indelible these colors are? Okay, it's not just the art, it's the, the way this book looks, the way it feels, mm -hmm. but could you talk a bit ab about how you actually create? Uh, sure, yeah, I mean, well, I, I uh, took the script and I basically storyboarded it, um, thumbnailed as we say in the business, um, you know, into uh, a comic, you know, so like just take like the text and, you know, figure out how it would read uh, visually. So once I did that, um, then I was able to collect like a lot of references and just sit down and just start uh, composing, you know, um, just like penciling, you know, um, I've I went page by page, like I would just, you know, pencil one page, or actually it was two, because I was averaging about two pages a week. So I would, you know, pencil two pages and then ink them and then color them. So it was, you know, a very, you know. It's a laborious laborious process. Laborious and very like methodical and um, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, but I'm, I'm very much, you know, like a 19th century painter, you know, like I don't use like digital tools, everything is, you know, ink and like watercolor on paper. 
Um, I even like hand lettered it too. I mean, like we used uh, a digital font because of the foreign collections. It just made it easier. But I wanted to make sure that the placement of the words were exactly where I wanted them because I feel that's the most important part about reading a comic book is that, you know, the like dialogue balloons create the flow of the story as well, you know, as well as the pictures, you know. Yeah. I, and the thing about lettering, it's such an underrated part of the comic book creation process because it's like sound in a film. You don't notice it until it's wrong. And when it's wrong, everything feels wrong. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I think you've done such a beautiful job matching those words to this story and to that artwork you've created. It's really lovely. Oh, thanks. I've it's had a, a lot of practice. It's a little distracting because we're also seeing what you guys are seeing. <laughs> oh, There's yeah. a screen down here, and I'm trying to look up, and I see Deirdre, and I'm like into her, but then I'm seeing there, and I'm more into the book. Sorry. <laughs> But I'm, I'm, it's, it's incredible, Carl, to see Thanks, the colors. I mean, the colors. It's just, it's exquisite work. Yeah, I went through a lot of cadmium red. Because <laughs> there's a lot of blood. There will be blood in this book. <laughs> yeah, it's indeed. Glorious blood. It's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, thanks. It's a whole career's worth of, 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 of blood in shots. Now, before we uh, get into a few questions from the audience, um, there's something, well, there's a very special treat we've got. Oh, this, uh, is, this is hilarious and beautiful. Can I set it up? Please do. Okay, yeah. so you have to remember, uh, we wrote a screenplay, and then it became a graphic novel, and then Carl would spend months, and then we would get a batch of images, and we would all just go, oh, oh my God. Like over an OMG, OMFG was probably every text I ever <laughs> sent yeah. to, to Carl. Seriously, I just would be like, OMFG. Um, and so there was, a, so all of a sudden now we're about to publish the book and the conversation was, what's the cover, right? Now you see the cover of the book, right? But there was an image and all this morning, we've been talking about this book upstairs with journalists all morning. And Every single one of these journalists I brought up, well, you know, the cover I wanted, and I flipped through the book, and I even put a post-it on the page so I could flip right to it and open it up and show them the image I wanted as the cover of this book. Now, when I had said that to Titan and my partners, they were like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, why? And they were like, be a little much for like a bookstore and you know they're kids and I'm like kids are come on anyway very happy by the way this was a cover alt but ultimately this is the correct cover for this book it is a book about this anthropomorphized spirit it is about women blah 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 it's the correct cover so all day long, I've been saying, but this was the cover I would have chosen. And then when we just came downstairs and met our publishers for the first time, because they're from England, Carl and I met for the first time in person today. <laughs> Russell and I have known each other, but you never met Carl before, did you? Did you go yeah. to Boston? Well, yeah, we went to... Uh, some of the research we did in New Mexico. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. So yeah. you guys had met. I never met. So anyway, yeah. when we just came down five minutes before we walked in to see you guys, now you take over the story. So uh, we, we took that story to heart and we took uh, Jamie's intentions to heart. So five minutes, about five minutes before we came on stage, we uh, presented Jamie with a very special... Well, all three of us. All three of you. Carl, Jamie Russell with a, a very limited edition, special edition. Numbered. Numbered and signed. You ready? <laughs> this <laughs> was what I wanted <laughs> as the cover <laughs> of Mother Nature. And honestly, look, they have numbered them 001. And I had no idea this was happening. Apparently, Carl might have, because I guess he had to supply the art. But 
I'm telling you guys, this is just, it's, it was such, I, five minutes before we met, <laughs> this happened. Backstage. It was, it's thrilling, and it's, it just shows you what kind of partners Titan have been. They have been nothing but beautiful support, and in the world of publishing, and in the world of all the art forms, to have partners, senior partners, the people who actually pay for this, to be this level of loving and supportive and fun. This shows they have a fucking sense of humor. <laughs> and I couldn't be more delighted. And there's a special thing. Yeah, so, so this, is a, this is, you know, Jamie's intended cover. This is the, the a very special edition of the book by Jamie and Carl and Russell. There are only 100 editions of they this. They made 100 copies, and three of them are up here, numbered one. Oh, Ten grand. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> it's, but, it's priceless. But, Come on. We'll, we'll do you better than 10 grand. I'll be we've very got, with this. We've got the balance. We've got the balance of that 100 copies. We'll be on the Titan booth, 553. Five, 5537 at the start of business tomorrow at the show. A hundred dollars uh, eat per copy, signed by the guys, numbered, and uh, a significant percentage of the proceeds will go to a Navajo based organization. That's who Titan is. That's who Titan is. Uh, they are Titans. <laughs> That's very kind of you. And we, we, we try our best, but the reality is this is all about the power and the beauty of this book, and it's something we're very proud to be publishing, very proud to be involved with. These guys have done an amazing job, and I'm telling you, you're just seeing a percentage of it up here Oh, it's screen. incredible. It's an incredible piece of work. And uh, our booth, 5537, don't go to row 5500, because you will not find us. The, the booth is numbered in a weird way because we've got a booth against the wall. So if you go into uh, the exhibition hall through door C, we're on the left at the end of row 2300. And uh, that's where tomorrow morning you'll the be able to The best booth. There we go. Not that the only booth. It's a competition, but... <laughs> <laughs> totally. And on that glorious note, we'll see you tomorrow if you can get there early enough to find a copy. And... Um, We'll take some, some questions yeah, from sure. the audience, I think. You got to let Deirdre, somebody let frickin' Deirdre in. Let her in. We're there are right two on. of them. Right on. We, we have, Amen. We have something for the people giving You're questions, welcome. don't we? Oh, yeah. I think so. So what? I believe we have, we have some items for people giving questions. People maybe. asking questions. Oh, look. I see. Yes, you will get something if you ask us a question. Apparently. Ricky and Will are around. We should have some items for people asking questions. Yes, we will focus this for you. Go on, bring it. Okay. Right, so please. All right, can you guys hear me? Oh, sorry. Hi. So I'm deaf, so I might have misheard. Um, I just want to be sure what inspired you to do this. You had a, such a successful career in acting. You still do. Great job on everything, everywhere, all at once. Thank Beautiful you. Beautiful work. Uh, yeah, what, infi what inspired you to create a novel, and what in who do you relate to and connect to the most, character-wise? Uh, what inspired me was that I'm human, and I have a brain, and I have eyes and ears and senses, and I am seeing the effect uh, that the climate crisis has, has reaped on the world. And that's really the inspiration. The inspiration is terror. The inspiration is fear that we are heading into a very, very dangerous uh, place. Um, and who I relate to, I wish I could say I related to the rebel, but I was a very good girl, <laughs> like a really good girl. Um, so I probably relate to Nancy, who is the engineer who's trying to do the right thing, uh, even though... A little compromised. She's, well, b but we're human, so we're yeah. all compromised because no one exists without compromise. So 
Um, thank you for your question. Well, thank you. Queen Jamie Lee, thank you for decades of some of my favorite stuff. Thank you so much. Um, I, I also know Final Draft, just in case you need someone else. Oh, okay, thanks. Well, I'm on, I'm on strike. But. Russell figured it out. <laughs> um, I got really excited when you uh, called out the sort of uh, lack of representation of uh, folks that are not white in genre spaces, uh, sci-fi horror, and I'm just curious if you have thoughts about using your platform. I, I think I speak for everyone in the room that you're one of the most beloved icons That's very in nice. all oh, of horror. Thank you so much. Horror. Um, and, and, and how you might use your platform to get some more voices heard. You know what, this is my platform right here. You're looking at it. Honestly, I don't, I'm not an activist like that. I'm a, I'm a human. And so in my humanness and in my work and whatever it is, you try to do the best you can to try to represent the best you can, the most people that you can. And you know, I, I when I don't have an experience or I don't have ex experience in something, I immediately try to ask. So for instance, I have a trans daughter and you know, I, I, don't, I don't know many trans people and so I have sought to learn. I'm a student. I'm not gonna pretend I know anything because I don't know anything. And then you start to learn and so I think that's the biggest message is that we're all learning we're all learners and we're all trying to figure it out, all of these things. And that's the platform. The platform is nobody knows anything, which is the truth. And, and, and unfortunately, we don't hear people say, you know, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to go to indigenous, you know, writers and people and ask them and spend the time. That's, we, we're immediately demanding an opinion and then we get slammed for it in this culture of misspeaking and say, so it's, you're, you're screwed if you say something, you're screwed if you don't say something. It's a terrible world we're living in. We're human, none of us know anything. We're learning, we're growing, and that's the goal. That's the platform. We're learning and growing. Thank you. Deirdre! <laughs> I bet you'll never guess what my favorite movie is. I'm kind of having a moment. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> um, first of all, we met a few years ago, and I thanked you then for scaring me through my entire life. You're welcome. I would like to thank you again for now scaring us in the most important way mm. possible. So thank you again. Um, I know you just said that you, you don't, well, this kind of piggybacks on what you were saying, but I, I greatly admire the way that you use your voice uh, for things that are important in a way that is both powerful but also kind so that people hear you and get something from it. And I wondered if you have any advice for moms like myself, how we can, normal people can kind of do the same thing, use our voices in a way that you know, people listen, that we can guide our children and get others around us to actually pay attention to these important topics like the trans community and, and what's happening with the planet and other things that I've heard you speak up about. And I sorry to piggyback I think, on that. I My think you're doing it. I think you're doing it by standing up here and talking to us. I think everybody in this room just heard you. That's how you do it. There's no magic here. You know, it's not magic. It's just not. So I appreciate that, but it's not like I, I mean, I may have invented Instagram and you all are gonna laugh and be like, oh, right, bullshit. You want some proof? Okay, I will give you some proof. Before Instagram, uh, when the iPhone first came out, I'm a photographer, I happen to be a, quite a good photographer, and I you know, realized that the iPhone has a very good lens and you can take pretty pictures. And I went to a bunch of my friends and I said, hey, uh, I can take really good pictures on my iPhone. They said, yeah, me too. I said, you know what, I'm gonna put up a blog spot Remember blog spots? Wow. I'm gonna put up a blog spot and, I'm, and we can all upload our pictures every day and share them with each other. And if you go to www. No, excuse me. If you go to iPhonies, <laughs> clever, I-P-H-O-N-E-Y-S dot, blog dot blogspot dot com, 
iphonies.blogspot.com, you will see all of the photographs that are still there that all of these photographers and I shared with each other. And the only reason we stopped iPhonies was the day Instagram, five years later, <laughs> came out. So yes, I did <laughs> invent Instagram. So. <laughs> Thank you for that, Jane. <laughs> Uh, iPhonies.blogspot.com. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's good. We're, we're racing towards the end of this panel. I know. And this right. I'm sorry to all the people that aren't going to get to ask anything, and don't hate me for telling that story, because then you're going to be like, you know, she told this stupid story about <laughs> Instagram, and I didn't get to answer my part. Go on. Go on. I have one more question. Great. Okay, know, we're I, ready for you. I don't know how to follow up on inventing Instagram. But, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I appreciate it. What, for all three of you, just quickly, what, was there any preconceived thoughts you had about the story that you had been passionate about for your whole life that you found to be wrong, you had to change midstream, or what was the greatest learning about the environment, about the core of this story, or about the Native uh, Americans? For me, it's that I didn't know anything about the indigenous people and the land that we stole and raped from them. I, had, I didn't really know. You know, I had a liberal idea of what it was, but I didn't really know, and that was a, a beautiful uh, uh, mind expansion for me. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say, because I have not yet, uh, this is one port, this, this story is one portal from our perspective. Please celebrate the works of Navajo authors who are yes. sharing their own perspective. Yep. Um, it's in, it, it, that's, that's more important. Um, when we when we started on the ground research for this story four years ago, um, spoke to everyone from scientists that worked for oil companies, which is a complicated place to be, uh, and uh, environmental lawyers, and they basically shared the next frontier of uh, of restricted access that the axons of the world are trying to control is water. It is recycling water uh, for communities that. Uh, where it's very hard to get clean water. And uh, that it's the kind of stuff we've seen in Mad Max. And uh, it, it feels, uh, it feels what, what is coming next. And I think I, part of me knew that, but it was the journey of going on and trying to tell the story um, uh, of, of realizing that. And um, if there is, I feel like a lot of us know climate change bad, but if that is a specific uh, part of the world that we could amplify uh, in this story, then uh, I'm very proud to do so. Please pick up a copy of Cadillac Desert if you haven't read it. Carl, fin take us home, oh. visual boy. I, I, I realize that I have a taste for blood and that I really enjoy drawing horror stories. So. <laughs> but, you know, I wholeheartedly agree with uh, Jamie and Russell. Um, you know, uh, like Russell and I had the privilege of um, sitting in like a Navajo um, ceremony um, and it, it, it really was quite an education about um, like what's going on to like that community especially Absolutely. with regards to water so yep. um, yeah <laughs> well said mate well said <laughs> Th thank you Thank you for that question. Yeah, um, beautiful. Thank you so much for joining us. You guys us. have been incredible. Incredible. Love you. Please Thank give you. it up God for bless. these three amazing creators. We have Russell Goldman, we have Carl Stevens, and we have the one and only Jamie Lee Thank you guys. Curtis. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.